After Earth, Mars is the next planet with the best conditions to host humans. This red planet has always fascinated us for centuries, inspiring astronomers, science fiction writers and quite a few stargazing entrepreneurs who have plans to launch their own missions to the planet. But would we really ever set foot on this planet where a year lasts 687 days? Despite our technological advancements, why has it been so difficult to get to Mars? The primary reason is that a trip to Mars could be incredibly tedious and complex. The challenges cannot be overlooked. For example, nearly two-thirds of Mars missions have met with some failure or mishap and those were just robotic missions. It gets more complicated when we start to think of sending people to the red planet. Think about the distance for a minute. Do you have an idea of how far they will have to travel? Mars is about 150 times the distance of the Earth to the Moon. That may not sound like a lot to you, but consider the added fuel, oxygen and food. More fuel means more weight. More weight means bigger capsules and bigger rockets. Those challenges alone put a trip to Mars on not just an adventure scale, but on a survival scale. If countries come together with a focus on making Mars a priority, we definitely could make great progress within a century. They need to build a supply station first, then build larger, well-equipped space stations. They need to construct stronger, more fuel-efficient vessels. Some of the other problems, too, can be solved by simply sending more than one spaceship. For instance, sending 50 to 20 unmanned supply ships over before sending people. However, there's another challenge – time. Since Mars is so far away and it orbits the Sun at a different rate than Earth, NASA or any mission of sending people to Mars must time launches to the Red Planet. They have to wait until the best window of opportunity opens. That's when the two planets are in the right orbital alignment. The same law is applicable for the trip there as well as the trip back home. However, the window for a successful launch opens up approximately once every 26 months. And since timing is crucial, once on the surface of the red planet, the astronauts will need to wait until another opening before returning. How long will that take? Plus the duration of each one-way trip, one might end up spending three to four years away from Earth. That doesn't sound interesting at all. Traveling 280 million miles round trip in a trackless, airless and boiling hot atmosphere full of micrometeors and cosmic rays, in addition to limited movement, boredom and loneliness, might just be too much for the travelers on the mission to Mars. It wouldn't be surprising if many died before getting there. Radiation is also a worry. Mars has no magnetic field, so radiation and gravity problems would last the entire mission. Let's even assume everything has been put in place. How about landing on Mars? The seven minutes of terror. Landing on Mars constitutes a challenge of enormous difficulty. It often fails and will never be risk-free. The popular slang, Mars is hard, has become a meme now thrown around during Mars landings, but it's perfectly true. Three things make Mars landings difficult. The planet's gravity, its atmosphere, and its distance from our planet. Entry to landing takes about seven minutes. Here, scientists and engineers have no control over the craft. They have to trust that everything will go right and the craft will land safely. If it doesn't, a crash landing could quite literally shatter thousands of hopes and dreams. It's a dreadful experience, which is why it's been dubbed the seven minutes of terror. To understand how truly tough it is, let's look back a little in the records. The first launch to Mars was in 1962, five years after the space age began with the launch of Sputnik. The former Soviet Union tried to launch a satellite into orbit around Mars, but due to issues with the rocket that launched it, the satellite never left Earth's orbit and eventually decayed in our atmosphere. It wasn't until 1971 that an artificial satellite entered the Mars atmosphere. The Soviet Union launched its Mars 2 probe, consisting of an orbiter and a descent module. While the orbiter sent back data successfully, the descent module didn't work as planned and crashed on the Martian surface. Shortly afterward, that same year, the Soviet Union's Mars 3 probe successfully sent a lander to Mars without it crashing, but it only worked for two minutes. Mars 6 crash-landed, while Mars 7 didn't land at all. The US didn't send anything to Mars until 1976. Viking 1 and Viking 2 both landed successfully on Mars, becoming the first two operational landers, while two subsequent missions from the Soviet Union failed because of computer issues. 
there weren't many successful Mars landings in the 1990s. The 1996 Russia's Mars launch failed. Fortunately, NASA's Sojourner rover landed on the Red Planet in 1996, making history as the first successful Martian rover. Unfortunately, in 1999, just before setting foot on Mars, America's Mars Polar Lander crashed. The 2000s didn't start out much better. On Christmas Day 2003, the UK's Beagle 2 touched down on Mars, but one of its solar panels failed to open and the mission was lost. Fortunately, they improved with the successful landing of Spirit and Opportunity in 2004 and Phoenix in 2008. China's rover, Zhurong, named after the mythical god of fire, successfully touched down on Mars on May 14, 2021, making it the first time China successfully landed a rover on the Red Planet. The mission was launched from the Wenchang spacecraft launch site on the 23rd of July 2020 on a long March 5th heavy lift launch vehicle. After seven months of transit through the inner solar system, the spacecraft entered Martian orbit on the 10th of February 2021. For the next three months, the probe studied the target landing sites from a reconnaissance orbit. On the 14th of May 2021, the lander rover portion of the mission successfully touched down to Mars, making China the second nation to make a soft landing on and establish communications from the Martian surface after the United States. After that, subsequent landings all through 2020 and 2021 were quite successful. It might seem like landing on Mars has become a routine, but the truth is scientists are yet to master it all. Landing on Mars is never risk-free. There are so many things we are yet to know about landing on the Red Planet. Scientists may have learned from their past failures and enhanced their technologies and landing concepts. Even at that, landing may never be a routine. Scientists learn more and more each time. For instance, when a system malfunctions in the course of landing, scientists and engineers on Earth can't send commands to a craft instantaneously due to the immense distance from Earth to Mars. Instead, they have to pre-program a sequence of actions that the craft will perform as it descends through the Martian atmosphere, and assuring that nothing goes wrong over there is beyond our control as humans. Another reason why it's been so difficult to get to Mars is as a result of its atmosphere. Despite not being as large as Earth, Mars' atmosphere is extremely thin. For instance, the Moon has almost no atmosphere, so landers use retro rockets to slow their descent to the lunar surface. Retro rockets are rocket engines that provide thrust in an upwards direction. On the other hand, Earth's atmosphere is thicker than that of Mars, and that allows the craft to glide gently down to the surface. But Mars? Its atmosphere is too thin for that sort of Earth-like gentle gliding, so as a craft plummets towards the Martian surface, it can reach speeds of more than 12,000 miles per hour. Trying to use retro rockets would subject a vessel to so much turbulence that the craft could be ripped apart. What's more, any craft trying to land on Mars suffers from the effects of friction as it hurtles through the atmosphere, risking burning up. In other words, Mars's atmosphere makes landing a challenge. You might be wondering, if landing on Mars is this difficult, how then does the daring billionaire Elon Musk plan to get it done in two to three years' time, as he predicted. Because maintaining and sustaining human existence for such an extended period of time is more important than simply building a large, sophisticated spacecraft. Or what do you think, viewers? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Whereas NASA seems to be more cautious with its plan. It plans to send out long-duration human missions out from the ISS to orbit the Moon over the next 13 years while pursuing the scientific exploration of Mars, followed up with cargo delivery and an unmanned sample return mission later on. But according to them, people won't even orbit Mars until the early 2030s, let alone set foot there. Meanwhile, Elon Musk, CEO and chief engineer of SpaceX, has his own audacious plans. Mars is something we can do in our lifetimes, he says. If NASA had the means to send men to Mars right now, would you volunteer for a manned Mars mission?